year we created the Teen Titans. And the fact that they're still so popular now uh, is something I never expected. I mean, I thought the book was going to die after six issues because I didn't think it would sell. And of course, I'm so grateful that I see a few young people uh, here. There's going to be some young lady dressed up as Raven. Uh, and that's going to become a very popular character, particularly because of the cartoon series. And um, the fact that it's all the people who play video games with, with, with Cyborg and Raven and Starfire and Nightwing and, and Deathstroke. I was like, wow, you guys make, you guys make money for me. Thank you for that. You know? <laughs> I'm, I'm so grateful that the Teen Titans did so well that uh, I, I meet people of all ages who love the Titans, that, uh, people who are as old as I am and are older. Uh, and people who are young enough to be my grandchildren. Uh, and one of the great things about the, the work I do, this is what I wanted to do since I was younger than you. And the fact that here I am, an old man, who can be playing in this sandbox, I can be the young person forever. I mean, I'm living my childhood forever. If you love to draw, one of the things I've always told people, yes, I'm very, very lucky that at the age of 19, I started working in comics, professionally. And uh, for those doing the math, I'm 60 years old now, and feel like I'm still 19. Um, and I've been drawing since I was five, and kept on drawing, kept on drawing. And one of the things I tell you, that even if you don't make a living doing uh, you know, artwork, never give up doing artwork. I mean, even if it's for your own pleasure, family, you do the sketch with your dog, um, anything, as long as you, know, you keep that spirit alive. I love this school. I mean, I've never been here before. But the idea of any school that encourages young people to be, you know, to caress the, the artistic side of them, you know, whether it be, whether it be acting, singing, uh, being a musician, uh, being an artist, I think it's absolutely phenomenal. You guys don't know how lucky you are. Because when I went to high school, Actually, I was, I was accepted in New York to the School of the Visual Arts. But my parents really wanted me to have a Catholic education, so I went to a, a Catholic high school, a high academic high school, which had an art program, which they canceled the year I went in. So I never had an art class. And there are certain things that, yes, I, I, I kept learning by watching. I learned from a lot of when I went into the comic business, I learned that I, uh, I was learning what I was, what I was getting paid. Wow, what, what luck did I have? Um, and they, um, and but I ended up getting like a master class from all the great editors and artists. And, uh, my art director, um, when I was at Marvel Comics, was the man who drew Spider-Man. A man named John Romita. Uh, all, all the illustrations you used to see about uh, Spider-Man, those were all drawn by John Romita. Um, and I got to meet all the great people whose work I love. I mean, it's very flattering when I, when, you know, I, I see the, the smiling faces and say they love my work. Uh, say, oh my God, it's him. Um, I had that same feeling when I got into the industry and I met the people, I met the two men who created Superman. I met uh, the man who created Batman. Uh, so I had that same giggly um, uh, young uh, kid feel of, the, of wow, this is that this is my fantasies come to life. And again, I was very, very lucky. But I also had to work very, very hard. Because one of the things you learn when you work as a professional artist is that a lot of people want to be professional artists. <laughs> and there was one artist who I worshipped. And he had now me and I are close friends. But he I showed him my work at a comic convention, the first comic convention I had gone to. I still have the scars to this day of, uh, of what he said to me and what he thought of my work. But he was also one of the first people, when I did become pro, who congratulated me. Because I wanted to be an artist so bad that I was willing to be, to go through the hard stuff, to be criticized. Because when you're an artist, it's like every drawing you do is like you're creating your own baby. You don't want to see your baby criticized. You want to be told that your baby is ugly. Um, <laughs> But as he said, when you're, when you're an artist and you want to be paid to be an artist, he's not your parent. He's not, he wasn't there to put any drawing I did on the refrigerator door. He, he said, if you want to be paid, you have to 
you know, play with big boys. You have to be uh, worthy of being paid. And I, and I know that as long as I've been in the industry, there are always a lot of young kids coming in. You know, young kids like you in a, in a few years who want to take my job. Which is fantastic. I mean, that, that, that's what keeps me working hard. Because there's always a young person out there who I'll see and oh my gosh, that person really has sound. I better keep working. Because I, uh, I, and I, and I love what I do. The worst thing an artist can do is when people ask me what my best work is, I answer, I hopefully it'll be the next thing I do. But you have to try to make yourself better each time. You, know, you can't be complacent. You can't be uh, thinking, I've done it all. Because the day you do that, then you never grow again. I mean, for people who see my work, one of the things you'll probably notice by work is a lot of detail. I put a lot into a page, because I still love what I do. I, I, I've been told by everybody, including my wife, you, you earn a lot more money if you put a little less work into the page. But then it wouldn't be me anymore. It wouldn't show the, the love that I have for the work that I'm doing. And the fans will notice that. I, 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 I think that one of the reasons, I, actually I'm still the pretty girl at the dance, um, is that you can tell, if you look at my work, that I still love what I do. I haven't gotten jaded. And what I can wish for anybody here is that same future, that whatever you end up doing, that you love what you do. There were two things that I wished in my career. I had, I had, there was an, a painter named Norman Rockwell, who I adored, I admired his work immensely, a wonderful painter. When he died in his 80s, he had an unfinished uh, illustration on his easel. He had an unfinished work on his drawing board. And that's one of my two wishes, is that what I want to have an unfinished picture on my drawing board when I die. My second wish, I don't want it to be the one that's there now. No. That's the only thing I know I can hope for. Um, I, I, I still got a few good years in me left. She asked, uh, would it be a good idea to learn anatomy? Um, uh, obviously, in order to uh, progress. That's one of the things, you know, since I didn't have an art lesson, I learned the hard way. Yes, anatomy is very important. I have to learn anatomy, if nothing else, to decide what part of anatomy I wanted to use for my style. Like, of course, I, draw, I tend to draw fairly realistic characters, so of course, as, as close as I can get to anatomy, the better. But then you realize, one of the things about cartooning or, or, or comic book art is exaggeration. So there are certain things that you take anatomy and then um, you play with it. Like, I know that the, the head would be a relative size to, um, to um, the body, but in order to make the character look more um, muscular, sometimes you make the head slightly smaller than what would be natural. But then you do that on purpose. One of the things about knowing about anatomy, if you know how, like, how the rib cage works, how the arms, muscles work, and everything else, is that it gives you the, uh, a consistency in your work. So that the character does not look like, if you draw him face forward, and then you draw him in profile, suddenly, wait a minute, now you're creating new muscles that weren't there in the other shot. So there's no con a continuity to the character. But then, when you see cartoonists like, uh, uh, like Charles Schultz who created Peanuts, um, or um, Popeye, or, any, or, or um, Pokemon, any, any of those uh, characters, I mean, they're not human anatomy remotely, but they're consistent because they design an anatomy that works for them. If you were drawing everything anatomically correct, if you wanted to draw everyone looking exactly human, you may as well be a photographer. That's one of the great, great things about art, is that really there's no wrong way to draw as long as you're, as, as long as you're consistent with it. You're not just, you know, oh, I, I'm, I'm, I'm throwing stuff down there and seeing what sticks. And if I'm asked to do the same type of thing later, I can't do it because I was just making it up as a better longer. You have to have a certain discipline. One of the things I've learned uh, in, in drawing is because I work in a collaborative field, I'm usually working with another writer, I'm usually uh, dealing with an editor, is that I'm surprised. Sometimes a writer writes something on a script and without 
being granted here. I'm cursing his name when I'm reading that, that script. Saying, How did he expect me to draw this? Uh, is he kidding? Is he a madman? You know, should this man be shot? But I sit down and I do it. I, you know, the best I can. And by the time I get finished, I want to thank that writer because I've become a better artist. Because I'm stretched out, you know, going out uh, beyond my comfort zone. When I, when I write my own work, which I'm currently doing now, one of the things I had to learn is to divorce George Perez, the artist, from George Perez, the writer. I want George Perez, the artist, to curse George Perez, the writer. Because I want to not draw, not, I don't want to write a story that I can draw. I want to write a story that challenges me to draw. And that, sometimes, you know, that, that's sometimes a difficult thing, when you're doing something, and in a comic book, if you let's say I'm designing a, a spaceship or the in, in, interior of a spaceship, okay, I can be really fancy, put all that detail. Now I've got to draw it again. Because it's not just appearing, that one scene is going to continue on. I created Frankenstein, so that the monster's going to kill me. Um, but that's the fun part, that you're never ever going to stop learning. You're, ne you're never ever going to stop challenging yourself if you want to have a long-term life as an artist. What was your first work published? My first work was published uh, uh, when I was 19 years old. It was Astonishing Tales number 25. There's a character called Deathlock, who's now appearing in that TV show, uh, Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. Because um, I was working as an assistant to the creator of Deathlock. So I, I, and I was still working as a bank teller when that uh, was printed. But that's my very, very first work, Astonishing Tales number 25. Okay. I've signed a lot of copies of that now. Um, but that's my very, very first uh, professional work. Um, I, I, I used to be a lot quicker when I started. Then when I started trying to really improve my artwork, I really, really slowed down. So when I say, when I, when people say, how do you draw so quickly? Um, I don't draw as quick as I used to. There was a time when I did three and a half books a month. Now I can barely do one. Uh, because I put so much more work in. But the simple reason when you're a commercial art, and a comic book art is commercial art. You keep your deadlines if you want to be paid. If you want to pay your mortgage, if you want to eat. It's amazing how much food in a house can really encourage you to get your work done on time. <laughs> yes? How do you come up with new characters? How do you come up with new characters? Well, that's the most, the most difficult thing to answer because, you know, it's like, how do, you, how do musicians know where the notes are? How do they come up with a song? It's, it, it, the inspiration hits you. I mean, um, Sometimes you just, for every idea that, that puts on paper, there are a dozen ideas you throw out. Um, and you know, sometimes it just, sometimes you're very lucky. In my case, I'm very, very, very lucky because I also work with writers. You get a lot of give and take, you know, back and forth. Um, you know, ideas that are tossed and, uh, based on questions that people have. And, you know, and some of the ideas are bad. But, I mean, not all ideas are good. And you just hope that something sticks. Like I said, I can't even judge. I never expected the Teen Titans to sell. Uh, it was lightning in a bottle. I never knew Raven would still be a popular character now, Cyborg, Starfire, Nightwing. Oh my god, they're still popular, you know. Long after I stopped drawing them, so you never know. How do you make your character your character? So people, when they see something from your character, they think of your character, like, never that's, that's a very good question. How do, how do I make my character my character? So people can identify it as my character. That's one of the most difficult things, and I've actually asked myself that question for decades, because I've had a successful career, and people say, oh, that's, that's a George Perez uh, figure, that's a George, and since I'm so involved, obviously, in producing, I can't see it. I don't understand it. I mean, it's just my style, because it's the way I draw. It, it isn't something that I draw that makes me, that I want to make it distinctly different from this other artist. It's just the way that I draw. Uh, and I never understood, um, uh, how, you know, what's a George Perez style? That's how I see people try to copy it. They said, oh, that does look a little like me. I never knew I did that. Um, so usually, if you, if, when, for your style to be recognized as a style, usually it's somebody else who tells you, not I myself. Because um, um, the day I was deliberately, I would deliberately try to draw in the George Perez style, it becomes mechanical. It needs to be organic, it needs to be something that blows out of you, not something that you plan. A question, that's a question.
question I get asked at every single convention, and I do have an answer for that. If you had seven, if you had five, six children, and somebody asked you who your favorite child was, that's why I do teeny books. I don't want to choose over my children. Or if you ask who my favorite character, either to draw or, or, or whatever, I can't choose over my children. I'm, I'm, I, 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 uh, I mean, insulting my other kids. <laughs> That's why I, I draw books, for those who know my career, that have a lot of characters in it. Because then, if I get tired of one child, go out and play, I've got another child I can play with right now. Um, so I have no favorite character. For that exact reason, I love to, every character is alive to me. So I don't want to insult any character by saying, you know, that's my favorite. You're not! What inspired you to co-create the Teen Titans? Actually, Marv Wolfman, the writer of um, Teen Titans, came up to me. Uh, he knew that I was looking to work at DC Comics after working for Marvel Comics for a number of years. And he came up with this idea of the Teen Titans, which I thought, no one's going to buy that. Uh, the only reason I did it uh, at first was because I wanted to draw the Justice League, which had all the characters I grew up with, Superman, Batman, Wonder Woman, Green Lantern, The Flash, all these characters in one book. But there was an artist who had been drawing it for years and he was not leaving the book. But if you give me a chance just to draw one issue of Justice League, then I'll do this Teen Titans book for you. Figuring in six months, it'll be canceled, it'll be over, no one will ever remember it. Uh, boy, was I wrong. 